Hello and welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of Industry News. It is more of an addendum to yesterday's video on the massive recall that Whiskey Parts is experiencing at the moment. Whiskey Parts has four handlebars that are cracking and according to the CS CPSC notice, it's fracturing under use. So we're not getting any indication at the moment that mechanics while building a bike have experienced that the bar has cracked. So let's talk about where uh, this is happening. So this is an aluminum handlebar that I'm using as a prop. And this, when the shifter is installed on these carbon handlebars, if you look back here, there's a metal strap. And that metal strap is a metal clamp, I should call it, should be torqued and you have to check each uh, component manufacturer and each handlebar manufacturer to find out what their spec is. Um, you know, the, the Shimano Durace 9100, I looked it up yesterday just to make sure I was putting out good information, is six to eight Newton meters. So what's happening apparently is the mechanics building the bike or the individual at home, and it's fine when the bike is built. So hopefully that continues to be the case. But when they're riding, it says under use, the bar is breaking. So uh, 37 reports of it thus far. But one of the things that I found as I was going through the initial article and then clicking on to the links was I, I noticed how Whiskey and Salsa were handling this recall as opposed to how Rad Power Bikes was handling their recall, <laughs> where they, um, when they were having issues with a proprietary tire size, like a 22 inch tire, which is a little bit odd, usually 20 and 24, the most common, but when they were having issues and, and customers were telling me about it, I couldn't find anything on their website. I couldn't find it where I thought it would be on their landing page, on their homepage. And, and even when I drilled around and went here, went there, I couldn't find anything on it. And yet when I went to the whiskey and salsa, I could. So then it got me thinking of, <laughs> and allow me to take you down memory lane, but it got me thinking about when I was getting my MBA. And one of the things that we talked about was corporate responsibility and um, ethics and how different companies have handled different things that were, you know, <laughs> really serious issues. And so we compared the way Ford handled the Pinto situation. And this was 1971 to 78. So some of you may not even be old enough to, <laughs> to know what I'm talking about, but look it up. And then there's also the Johnson & Johnson situation with Tylenol. So Ford decided, well, we're going to handle those, you know, pay as you go. Every time we have a, a lawsuit, we'll just pay for that. But we won't recall all the Fords that are out there that, you know, could explode. All the Ford Pintos, I should say. And Johnson & Johnson, when they had a Tylenol issue, they recalled 30 million of their products off of the shelves. And then, of course, later on, we got those um, those seals on all our food and over-the-counter drugs and all these other kinds of things. So these two companies handled it completely different. Rad Power Bikes and now Whiskey, I see a difference in how they're handling. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, all right. So let's talk about uh, some of the comments that came in the video. One uh, mentioned about quality control, quality assurance. And yes, I, I agree. If you're manufacturing a product, you have to continue to, to check it during its production run. But I also wonder if mechanics um, 
are tightening stuff down too much. Mechanics and, you know, do-it-yourselfers at home. So if you're a shop owner or, or um, service manager, shop manager, please ensure that your mechanics are using a torque wrench. Um, please ensure they know the correct torque because just using a torque wrench doesn't, uh, doesn't absolve them of maybe uh, torquing something too much or too little. Let's also consider that fact as well. Okay. Um, lastly, in these points, I, I would like you, if you are considering buying a, com a carbon component for your bike, that you take a look at the entire system, bike, rider, system, not just the bike when you hang it up on the scale and you're bragging to your friends at coffee that, oh, I got my bike down to 16 pounds. Great. Good for you. But take a look at the entire system. If you are, if you consider rider, bike, water bottles, toolkit, computer, phone in your pocket, helmet, shoes, everything that goes into getting you on the road riding, dirt, gravel, mountain bike, whatever you want to call the system, does it make sense? And you got to use some critical thinking skills. You, you look at the component and and its application, carbon component, and that application and say to yourself, does it really make sense to save 50 grams on this component? Or sometimes less, but could I just use the aluminum uh, version of this, save myself a couple of hundred bucks as well, but I have a little bit more durability built in by using an, an aluminum component as opposed to the same exact carbon component. A lot of manufacturers do make the two items almost identical and just change the material choice. So think about that. But let's take a quick look at what I was talking about, um, about how these different companies handled it. So this was the, the initial notice that I received, right? Here's the issue, and then down here are the links. So if you click on those links, it takes you immediately to the recall notice in big, bold print, and you can see that. But what I also did was I clicked on, just to go to the home page, just to see how it's being handled. And here on the home page, on the landing page, right at the top, so you got your menu options here, and then right at the top, it tells you that these handlebars are being recalled. So on the home page, and that's the way it should be. It should be immediately apparent, apparent, apparent to you as a consumer that this particular company has these particular bars under recall at the moment. Let's see what Whiskey did. This is the home page for Whiskey. And right at the top, so here's your menu options. In red, they've got the whiskey handlebars listed right there. Okay, so that is the way that I would like to see it from a menu. I'm sorry, from a from a uh, a brand, right? Just be out, be open about it, and then what are you going to do, right? So what are you going to do? Well, here's what they're going to do. If you look at this, is the Consumer Product Safety Commission, so CPSC for short. It tells you what the bar is. It tells you the date of the recall. It tells you how many units are, are possibly affected. And it tells you what's going on, okay? These bars on these bikes, and they were sold, uh, and then they'll give you a time frame. And, you know, the this is not an inexpensive product, um, that this handlebar was, was installed on. It's, it's bikes between 4,700 and 7,000. And so there's an expectation as a consumer that you're not, you're buying an expensive bike and there's an expectation from you 
that <laughs> the manufacturer has done everything to keep you safe and keep you from personal injury while using their product. All right, so we go down here and we see here in the U.S. Safety Commission, they're, they're, they're saying Taiwan, but when I go to the Canadian one, I like this. I go to the Canadian one, I actually get to see who the manufacturer is. So it's Permatech out of Taiwan. Now, what is also interesting here is that in Canada, they've had no reports of injuries and the failure of these bars, the majority, the, well, the entire amount, amount of reports are all from the U.S., 37 reports. And here's, here's an interesting thing. They're cracking or fracturing while in use. So no reports of a mechanic saying, hey, I, I was installing this handlebar and, and, uh, and I applied X torque and boom, the handlebar broke. Now, uh, one other thing that I do like, and because I've looked at so many of these, I'm trying to, oh, here it is. So if even if the bar looks good, they're like, hey, stop riding it. Go to your local retailer and you will get a free installation of a replacement carbon handlebar or an aluminum bar. So you have the choice. Now, these handlebars are 200 plus, 250. Uh, yeah, here's the numbers here. Sold for about $240. So this is not a cheap handlebar by no stretch of the imagination. So... It's important to note that you can get a an aluminum uh, alternative to this carbon handlebar. So I get a second chance to make the correct choice for your application and um, your bike, your application. Everyone has different reasons why they've put X component on their bike. So anyway, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe. Um, as I look at the analytics, that last video was a, about a 60-40 split. So we had about 60% were subscribed and 40% were unsubscribed. If you are getting value out of my content, please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything and it means the world to me. Okay, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you up the road.